Until 1990, visas were still called Sichtvermerk in the Federal Republic of Germany. They exist all over the world, but we are interested in the visas that allow entry into Germany. And that's exactly what we are looking at today. But as always, we'll start with a little history. A forerunner of the visa was a letter of safe passage, Geleitbriefe, through the lands of the Holy Roman Empire. Various forms of escort have been known since the Middle Ages, some of which were legally documented and some of which were given in letters. Martin Luther, for example, was guaranteed free escort to the Diet of Worms in 1521 in a letter of escort from Emperor Charles V. A hundred years earlier, King Sigismund had promised the same to Jan Hus for the Council of Constance in 1414, but then failed to keep his promise. Such letters of safe conduct were issued to diplomats, merchants or special persons as well as pilgrims. Destitute travelers, on the other hand, were picked up in the Palatinate, for example, and then settled in empty villages. On the other hand, in order to be able to travel, passports were often required, stating the period and road of the journey because the absolutist rulers did not want their people to make useless journeys. Between the end of the 18th century and the middle of the 19th century, such passports become the norm. From 1813, all travels in Prussia required a residence permit in the form of a visa and innkeepers were only allowed to accommodate people with a corresponding certificate. In the Dresden Conference of 1850, a Passkarte, passport card, became compulsory in the German territories for the inhabitants of these territories and from 1859 also in the Austrian Empire. This card was a forerunner of today's Personalausweis identity card. This meant that visas were no longer required, first in the North German Confederation and then in the entire German states. In 1867, the visa requirement was completely abolished in the North German Confederation. Until the First War, neither passports nor visa were needed to travel in Europe. After the start of the First World War, passports and visas were compulsory for the warring parties. These regulations were maintained in Germany after the war and even tightened during the Weimar Republic. During the Second World War, visa were again required and often also for the departure of one's own citizens so that men could not avoid military service. Currently, there are different rules for visa since often citizens of friendly nations can enter the country without a visa while citizens of other nations require a visa. For a while, for example, a Jordanian entry visa became invalid as soon as an Israeli visa was noted in the passport. While the word visa was commonly used in GDR, it was called Sichtvermerk in the Federal Republic of Germany. After the Schengen visa was introduced in 1990, the word visa was also adapted in Germany and has now replaced the word Sichtvermerk. But which visas are available in Germany? There are differences depending on the country of origin. Citizens from EU member states, Switzerland or Norway, for example, enjoy freedom of movement and can live, visit and study or work in other countries at any time. Others require a visa, like a Schengen visa, for up to 90 days. However, these are valid for a period of 180 days, so leaving the country for one day is no good for obtaining a new visa. Quite the opposite. The data of people who have committed visa violations are recorded in a file. If you continue to work our way through the visa navigator, the link is in the description, we will be asked about all possible combinations. For example, whether someone is seeking family reunification. There are various reasons for this, for example, if you are married to a German or have a child together. Of course, you can also try to become self-employed. To do this, you must first enter the country and then obtain a visa for self-employed. 
you should check beforehand whether you meet the requirements. For example, if you want to open a hairdressing saloon, you must be a master hairdresser. If you would like to become one, you can of course start with a visa for vocational training. The visa gives you six months to look for an apprenticeship. Provided you have appropriate German language skills and are not older than 25. Here above I link to a video about dual vocational training in Germany. In my opinion, you should find out about the desired apprenticeship from your home country and perhaps make contact with potential employers, otherwise the six months can be very short. Of course, you can also study or even do research in Germany. There are also suitable opportunities for this, links to the pages again in the description. And a video about studying in Germany is linked above. There is also the possibility of doing an internship in Germany as an intermediate option. Internships are often also necessary during a degree course and internships abroad are very popular. Of course, some people want to work straight away. The first question is whether an offer has already been made. In principle, it is important whether it is a degree that is also recognized in Germany, an apprenticeship that is recognized in Germany, or whether there is at least plenty of experience in the profession. If none of this is the case, there is no option of obtaining a visa. Otherwise, there are three points. One for students, like if you have an employment contract and a recognized degree, this is possible. If you are also interested in a blue card, you must earn at least 41,000, 41 euro 80 in the healthcare sector or at least 45,300 in STEM. If you have a recognized professional qualification and an employment contract, you can also obtain a visa. If you are also interested in the blue card, you must also earn at least 45,000, 41 euro 80 in the healthcare sector or at least 45,300 in STEM. There's also the option of obtaining the blue card as an IT specialist, in which case you must have at least three years experience. If you want to work as an experienced worker without proof of a recognized qualification, this is also possible. You need at least a degree and proof of at least two years experience in the profession and a contract with an employer here with an annual salary of at least 40,770 euro. However, this visa is typically only valid for 12 months. However, if you already have a degree or apprenticeship qualification and would like to have it recognized in Germany so that you can then use the academic or skilled worker visa, there is also a visa to have your qualifications checked and recognized. For this, you need at least language level A2 in German. This visa is then valid for six months. And the opportunity card has recently been introduced. The visa is valid for 12 months and the qualifications are converted into points. At least six points must be achieved. This required at least A1 in German or B2 in English. There are a few professions in which English is spoken, but these are almost exclusively in the IT sector. Some international companies have English as a company language internally, but when it comes to customers, the majority of customers in Germany are German-speaking and expect to be advised in German. And of course, you need sufficient financial resources for your time in Germany. Students, for example, have to prove around 12,000 euro for a year and they often have the benefit of student discounts and the local monthly pass for public transport in the region. Overall, I recommend looking for the right job from home and then planning the entry and visa formalities together with your new employer. And please don't underestimate the importance of German in Germany. Once you have arrived and have the right visa after school, studies or a job search, you may be able to get a permanent residence permit. If you want to read through the whole law, a link to the official English version can also be found in the description or in the credits. Prequisites for this Niederlassungserlaubnis are, among other things, that you have already been living legally in Germany for five years, 
that your livelihood is secured and that you have sufficient knowledge of the German language, preferably B1 or better. You have a basic knowledge of the German legal and social order, adequate housing and health and pension insurance. Such a settlement permit is unlimited and cannot be subsequently limited in time, which, among other things, requires fewer visits to the authorities than if you had to regularly extend temporary visas beforehand. A settlement permit can be obtained after three years, for example, if you are married to a German. If you want, you can of course also apply for German citizenship. Once you have this, you are a German with all rights and obligations. I hope I have been able to give you an overview of the most important visa options. There are also opportunities for au pairs or voluntary work in Germany, but since I do a whole series on volunteering in Germany anyway, the right visa will follow as part of the series. Just take a look there. By the way, such organizations and clubs as a whole are a great way to get in touch with others, especially Germans, and improve your German language skills at the same time. And, as I always say, a recommendation from a friend for a new job is worth much more than a good degree. So get in touch with work colleagues, neighbors and clubmates. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next video.